Hello, my name is Alexander Schifrin. I'm an endocrine surgeon at Jersey Shore University Medical Center. I'm going to discuss today about primary hyperparathyroidism. Parathyroid hormone regulates calcium level. Uh, calcium is important uh, in all functions of our body, and especially uh, for the bones, for example. It stabilizes the bones. It's, it helps with the conduction of the nerve function and the muscles motility. What is the primary hyperparathyroidism? It's a disease of the parathyroid gland or glands. There are a total of four parathyroid glands in the body. They're located behind the thyroid, on each side of the thyroid, two glands. They kind of hide behind the thyroid. So we don't see it on routine um, screening tests, we don't see it on x-rays, and only specialized studies can detect parathyroid glands if they enlarged. But uh, diagnosis is not made by finding the glands, diagnosis made by the presence of the elevation calcium level and elevation of the parathyroid hormone level. The symptoms are so unspecific, uh, generic, that sometimes patients are ignoring those symptoms. For example, patients could be presented with a tiredness, with a tiredness, uh, fatigue, depression. Uh, some patients may have memory problems. Uh, they may complain of bone pain, muscle pain, uh, constipation, frequent urination. If these symptoms, symptoms present, it doesn't mean that the patient has the disease, but if this disease correlates, with the, uh, when the symptoms correlates with uh, high calcium level and high parathyroid hormone level, uh, that most likely related to this disease. And treatment of the primary hyperparathyroidism will, will improve the symptoms. Uh, after the parathyroid adenoma is localized, or if it's not localized, but we know that patient needs a surgery, we suspect hyperplasia, then uh, we start talking to the patient about the surgical approach and we offer a minimally invasive parathyroidectomy. What is the minimally invasive parathyroidectomy? It's a same-day surgery when surgeon uh, makes a small incision in the neck, usually transversely in the skin crease in the mid of the neck, somewhere that would be hidden in the skin crease, and uh, goes directly onto, into this uh, abnormal parathyroid adenoma localized on preoperative studies. Another option for minimally invasive parathyroidectomy is video-assisted approach. Video-assisted approach is uh, the same as the laparoscopy or using the camera with abdominal surgery. Surgeon makes a small incision in the neck. The incision is small enough to put just a small camera into this incision, find the parathyroid adenoma and remove it. The incision is so small that it's even smaller than a, uh, than a physician's finger. So a physician can't even put the uh, uh, finger into the incision, but only uses instruments specifically designed to remove the parathyroid adenoma with video-assisted approach. Uh, as I mentioned, it's a same-day surgery. The patient is staying in the hospital for three hours after the surgery. Uh, there's no stitches after the surgery. It's usually just a skin glue on the skin. And after three hours, he can go or she can go home and follow with the physician in about two weeks to check the parathyroid hormone level, check the calcium level. Uh, the reason for follow-up is very important, and especially to follow up with an endocrinologist. Why is that? About 10% of patients may still have persistent disease in another gland or glands, and those will not be detected within the next month, but may be detected in the future. If this developed within a six month, it's considered to be persistent disease. If, if the elevation of the calcium detected um, more than six months after the surgery, that considered to be a recurrent disease. That's the reason why patients should be persistently, even if the surgery is successful, follow with an endocrinologist.